So today, hello everyone. In this lecture, you are going to learn Spring Boot with JPA plus MySQL. So, so far we have created projects like, let me show you one by one. So in, uh, in Spring application, right? Spring Boot application or Java, if you want to persist, the, if you want to save the data in database, uh, Java or Spring Framework is having uh, four layers actually. In four layers, we uh, based on the four layers, we can perform database operations. What are those four layers? Let me explain you one by one. JDBC. So one layer is JDBC. Another one is JDBC template. And another layer is entity main. Another layer is JPA. And fourth one, Spring Data JPA. So here in these three layers, four layers. So total by using these four layers, we can perform database operations in Java or Spring application. So in Java, uh, plain JD, uh, in plain uh, uh, advanced Java. So we used to use JDBC concept to persist the data. So after the JDBC, so once Spring uh, came into picture, so they have enhanced with the JDBC template. So JDBC template is having abstraction on JDBC. So JDBC template internally, it uses JDBC only. Okay, so we have created a project with the JDBC template, right? So after that, so after the JDBC template, so again, JPA came into picture. So JPA is nothing but, so here, yesterday we have used, right? Entity manager. So using JPA, so we can uh, persist the data with the help of entity manager. So this is another layer of uh, data, database layer to persist the data in database. So now what is the fourth one? Spring data JPA. So here repository. So here we are going to persist the data with the help of repository. In third layer, we are going to persist the data in entity manager. In second layer, we are going to persist the data using JDBC template. In first layer, JDBC. These are all the four operations. By using these four operations, we are going to perform code operations in database, any database. So, so far, so we have done JDBC template and uh, entity manager. And now we are going to create, uh, we are going to pass the data with the help of repository. So you can, uh, you have to understand what are these four, what is the difference? So JDBC is nothing but, so there we have to create the connection object and statement object and prepared statement and a lot of code you have, we have to write. So that is optimized in JDBC template. So with the help of JDBC template, so we no need to write the we no need to create the connection object and we no need to create the statements and prepared statements, right? So that code is optimized in JDBC template. So JDBC template internally, it uses JDBC only. So it has abstraction on JDBC. Now uh, uh, come to uh, JDBC template. So we no need to create connection objects and statements and prepared statements. So now let slowly again JPA came into picture. JP in the sense ORM software. So ORM software, object relational mapping. We already discussed it, right? So Java persistence API. So here entity manager, this is another layer to perform database operations, which is available in only JPA. So they after that, so it has a uh, entity manager is having abstraction on persistence uh, context actually. So now fourth one, fourth one is uh, Spring Data JPA. This is another dependency which is introduced by Spring Boot. So here we are going to perform database operations with the help of repository. So this is uh, repository is having abstraction on entity manager. 
so entity manager is optimized as repository so here we no need to uh, define at the rate transactional annotation and uh, and we uh, and uh, differ, uh, so many uh, user defined methods are there so uh, it is very flexible to perform database op operations with repository so i will create uh, one project with repository okay so the, the, the this is the difference between these four layers okay so again i am explaining you so first jdbc came into picture after that so it was optimized to jdbc templates after that jpa came into picture to avoid database dependency so jdbc template is uh, having database dependent right so we used to we used to write the queries and all so where jpa came into picture we no need to write the queries so hypernet will create jpa will create hypernet or jpa will create uh, 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 sql statements for us so this is object relational mapping so another uh, another uh, implementation for to perform database operations so again fourth one still again one more they, ha they are optimized the code with the help of performing database operations with repository spring data repository okay so these four by using these four layers we can perform database operations okay so now uh, in this lecture we are going to create spring boot with jpa plus mysql okay so let's start now open browser and then here we can go to start dot spring dot io spring initializer right so we can create project from spring initializer i'm going to create a maven project and then uh let it select the uh, latest version spring boot latest version 3.1.5 and uh, project metadata so let me give project level package so com dot spring boot dot mysql okay or under jpa dot so this is the our uh, root package of application now i will give project name as spring boot data jpa with mysql okay so now here uh, this much big package i don't want uh, i will remove this that's it so now my sort is saying error so let me create uh well let it be as is so let me create uh, using a jdk 17 so here we will uh, select JDK 17 because all three uh, Spring Boot 3.0 onwards, it will support JDK 17 and JDK 21. So I will go with JDK 17. So let me create, let me add dependencies. So to create REST APIs, uh, we need to add web module, Spring web module. So now, uh, we need to add JPA, Spring Data JPA. So we need to add another dependency. We, we are going to connect with MySQL database. So you can add MySQL driver. So after that, so I will add another one, Spring DevTools. So Spring DevTools, uh, uh, this is for without restarting the server our changes will reflect in tomcat server right so i will add this dependency as well so total we have spring web and spring data jpa and mysql driver and spring boot dev tools so let me add a, a h2 database as well so now let me generate the project.
so project is generated so let me copy the project and extract into any folder any one of the folder i'm going to extract in c drive spring underscore applications so you can extract the project file uh, any of the directory okay so now extract it here so my project is extracted i am copying project to path now we can open eclipse so here we can import the project go to file you can see import option so here you can select existing Marvin projects and then you can give the project path which we have downloaded from the spring initializer so now click on finish button so project is imported successfully if you open palm.xml you can see we have spring dev tool spring web spring starter jpa data jpa and HD in memory database and MySQL driver. So currently we are going to connect with uh, MySQL server, right? Right. So you may have doubt, right? Actually, so sir, why we added HD in memory database? Actually, this is not needed. The purpose why I have added, let me explain you. So if you delete this uh, dependency, HD in memory dependency. So after that, so let me start the Spring Boot application. From where we can start Spring Boot application, this is our entry point, right? So from here we can start our Spring Boot application. Right click and run as Java application. So if you see the moment I start the server, you can see our server is not started successfully. Why it is expecting JDBC URL and driver class, JDBC URL and driver class. So whenever you are importing projects from the, whenever you are trying to connect with any specific database, whenever you are adding Spring Data JPA dependency, so uh, Spring, Spring Container will expect data source. So by default, MySQL username and password, uh, our application, uh, will not have uh, MySQL username and driver class name details and username and password, right? So uh, that's why when uh, server start up, so it will fail because of it is looking for MySQL driver and username and password to connect with MySQL database because in form.xml we have added MySQL driver, uh, right? MySQL connector, right? So it is trying to connect with MySQL. So since our project is not having MySQL uh, connection details, so that's a reason our application will not start successfully. So if you add a Spring uh, H2 in-memory database, now you can see, let me start the server again. If you start the server, you can see our server started successfully without any errors because H2 in-memory database by default, it will enable in Spring Boot application. H2 in-memory database by default, the data source, the data source which is available for H2 in-memory database, Spring Boot will provide by default. So that is the reason I have added uh, Spring uh, so H2 in-memory database. So for us, as of now, this is not needed. To make you understand, I just added by default, okay? So now this is not at all needed for us. We will, we can remove it, okay? So let me stop the server. So now what is, uh, if you remove this, what will happen? Let me, so before removing, I want to show you in-depth concepts of H2 in-memory database. How H2 in-memory database is uh, enabled by default in Spring Boot application. So let me explain you that. So how Spring Boot is enabling HD in memory database by default. So let me open the resources folder. In resources folder, there is application properties, right? So let me enable debug. Let me debug the code, okay? Logging dot level dot 
uh, root root is equal to debug. So we can debug root level. So root level in the sense everything, all the packages, all the libraries which are we have added in the in our project, right? In Spring Web or Spring Framework or Hypernet, everything. So uh, so logging dot level dot root property uh, is equal to debug. The moment you specify this property in application dot properties, so we can debug entire application what is happening in background. Okay, so now let me start the application. So you can see there is number of logs are shown here. So the moment you start the server, these many operations are happening. So for the now I, I am going to show you how Spring Boot application is enabling HT in memory database by default. So how we can do so. Uh, you can click on the console now open control f and search for uh, h2 console if you find if you search for h2 console you can see there is a h2 console auto configuration you can see right so based on the h2 console auto configuration class so Spring Boot is enabling by default H2 in-memory database. You can see there is a property we have already discussed in previous lectures, right? So how we can enable or disable H2 in-memory database with the help of spring.h2.console.enable is equal true. So if you make it as a false, so you can disable H2 in-memory database. If it is uh, declare it as a true, so H2 console will be enabled. So with uh, whenever you are adding H2 in memory database dependency in palm.xml, so by default Spring Boot will enable data source for H2 console based on H2 console auto configuration. So this is most important in depth concept guys, you have to remember. How Spring Boot enabled H2 console by default with the help of H2 console auto configuration class based on the, the property spring.h2.console.enabled equal true. So this is enabled by default in Spring Boot application. So you got it right. So similarly, uh, you, you can check JDBC, you can see JDBC template also. If you are, if you want to work with JDBC template, there is a JDBC template auto configuration. So here, so here also JDBC auto configuration. The data source is enabled. You can see based on the data source, JDBC template auto configured by default by Spring Boot. So with the help of Spring Boot, right? So like this, uh, it is enabled by default in Spring Boot application. So now we are uh, currently we are going to connect with MySQL database, right? So I don't want to connect with HD in memory database. Now we no need no need to have this dependency. So I am removing this dependency H2 in memory database dependency. So once you remove the dependency, so your application will not start successfully. Your application will have errors. So let me open the console. If you see, if you see the moment you remove the HD memory database, so we are, we are getting the error. Database already closed. So closed and it is unable to open the data source actually. So to check actual, actual uh, error, let me stop the server because the moment you remove the dependency, whenever there is a, a changes in palm.xml, you should always update your project. Right click on the project, go to Marvin and click on update project. Whenever there is a changes in palm.xml, make sure you are always updating the project. Otherwise, uh, those, those changes, you are, uh, it will misguide you actually. Okay. So now let me start the server. Now I have removed the H2 in memory database dependency. Now I started the server. So now you can see there is an error in the console because 
so our application is trying to connect with mysql database so it is not able to identify the mysql database because there is no connection details available in our application you can see failed to determine suitable driver failed to determine suitable driver and url and username you can see there is a it will it will clearly says url you can see failed to configure data source so by default spring boot application will not enable data source for mysql so now we have to configure data source where we need to configure already you know you are aware of it in previous lectures i already explained you so where we have to enable in application dot properties what we have to write spring dot data source dot url is equal so uh, what is the url to connect for uh, mysql database adbc colon mysql colon slash slash local host colon double three zero six slash we have to give your database name so let me open my sql your sql client so here so you already know right how we have installed these softwares you can check previous lectures so employee db so we have employee database so we are going to connect with employee db so employee db save this so now next what we need spring dot data source dot username root is my user root is the username in my machine so now spring dot data source dot password so to connect with any database in spring boot we need these three properties any database if you want to connect with spring or spring boot application spring boot application so we need to have these three properties then only you can connect with any database based on the dependency which you have added in palm.xml so now let me start the application fail to configure your why still attribute is not specified so let me check jdbc colon mysql colon localhost colon double three zero six see here i have given uh, spell mistake you can see there is a spell mistake in the property that is the reason and this url is not able to recognize so let me correct it spring dot data source dot url let me save the properties file now you can start the server See, still failed to configure database url embedded data source could be configured so it is expect still it is expecting h2 console is, you can see consider the following uh, h2 or derby you can see right so still it is trying to connect uh, h2 in memory database not uh, uh, mysql right so why because we have to disable that so we i already shown you earlier right so when you login here so in a spring boot application by default h2 console uh, is enabled right so we need to disable that property how we can disable that property spring dot h2 dot console dot enabled equal false this Spring dot h dot console dot enabled equal to false. Now root and admin root is the username and admin is the password. So let me check whether I have configured proper DB employee DB. Yes, correct. So let me. So there is a database created employee database. So now let me start the application.
still it is expecting url so let me update the project right click on the project and move in and update project so now let me start the application So and still it is looking for embedded database, H2 in-memory database. If you have database settings to be loaded from the particular profile, you may need to activate it. No profiles are currently active. Okay, so by default, actually it is not uh, activating the uh, SQL database. So let me add H2 in-memory database without that it, it is not uh, allowing to connect my sql database let me update the project again move in update project click on force update and okay now again let me start the server So now server started successfully. So now our server is started successfully. So it is always expecting H2 in memory database. Okay, let it be as of now. So now let me create the repository layer. So what we have to do now, we are going to connect with MySQL database with JPA with the help of repository layer. You can see with the help of repository layer. So now, so before that, so let me create the controller package. Right click on the so, uh, root package of the, our project and then click on uh, package name. So select the package. So let me create controller package. Created. So now we need to create the controller class employee rest controller so to make you clear understand employee rest uh, controller let me finish so you need to declare at the rate rest controller annotation to become your class as a rest controller that's it. So this is the first step. After that, so we need a model object, right? So if you want to perform database operations, we have to create model object. So let me create the model object. Other. And then create class. Employee. Click on finish button. So now employee will have private integer id employee id next a private string first name similarly last name and uh, email mobile number so let's say we have uh, one two three four five properties okay so let me we need to create gen, uh, generate setters and getter methods right click on the project sorry right, right right click on the class and source you can use select all and then generate setters and getter methods so we need to override two string method as well done our model object is ready so now our controller is ready now our model object also ready so now what we have to do we have to create the api public uh we'll create a find find employees okay so find employee will always return employee object so 
oh no this should return employee object right so as of now i will do return null so since we have not created a service class object right so find employee method should be get mapping so employee object we need to organize the imports so that's it so now why i have written first controller so after writing the controller right so uh, find employee method so if you want to uh, find the employee we need to get the our uh, employee id right to find the employee so let me get it from the uh, let me get it from the this time i want to send employee id from post request let me create post request i am sending employee id from the post request so how we can send at the red request to body and then you have to pass employee objects as part of employee model object only i want to pass employee id okay so now uh whenever you are sending the data as part of post request right so i want to debug this information so whenever you are sending request from the rest clients so i want to capture that request so far we haven't captured the request so how it is looks like right so let me capture the request now so i am teaching you in depth guys you should uh, concentrate on okay so we are we are going to cap before inserting the data now we are going to capture the uh, request okay so how we can capture the request i am going to show you so let me open the browser and you have to test uh, your api from talent api tester so what is the api name so we have not given the api name right so let me create the api name so here i will give find employee find employee is the api right so let me invoke this api and i am clearing the console so i have cleared the console so now we are going to debug the code in depth actually so how we can capture the request from the rest clients so now let me go to the browser from here you can call find employee api so what is the request method it is post request method i am sending employee id as part of request body so here i am going to give id so as of now i am giving one comma okay so now let me send the request so let me clear the console before that so there is nothing available in the console i just clear the log now send the request so we got the response right our request went successfully so what a 200 nothing but request went to the server and response came back to the client okay 200 is, is, uh, indicates that your request successfully processed so now let me go to the console you can see if you see in the console you can see there is a request received from the client you can see all the request information here guys you can see all the request information so uh, what is the request i have sent so i sent employee id sachin virendra shivak so something like that so to search the employee we do not need this information actually so i don't want to pass this also let's assume i don't want to pass this also so even if you pass you can see in the console there is a request is coming you can see there is a log request what type of request it is so whenever uh, if you want to debug your request information in the server what kind of request came into your server so you can debug in depth based on the the property which we have enabled in application dot properties what is that root logger we have enabled 
root package of the application. So we have enabled root equal to debug. So logging dot level dot root equal debug. So this property will enable to debug all the packages, all the packages which are packages in the nothing but the dependencies you can see. So there is a more dependencies, right? If you open, so there is a number of libraries. There is a number of dependent jars are available, right? Right. So all the jars related packages, so information, uh, debug related information will display in console. So now what we are trying to debug? So we are trying to capture the request from the REST client in our server. So now the moment I send the request, you can see there is a request is printed in the console. Received post request and it is a HTTP request. What is the URL? Find employee is the API. And what is the port number? 8080 connection keep alive content length and request ID is generated. And what is the, what is it will accept application or JSON content type application or JSON. You can see from where we send this, go to your browser. We have, uh, by default, we have selected, right? Accept application or JSON and content type application or JSON. This information also we are able to capture in the console. Similarly, so from which browser, you can see from which browser request came. So request came from Chrome browser. So I, uh, I have sent request from Chrome browser, right? So it is, our server is displaying Chrome information also. So, and it will access, it will access to Mozilla and uh, Chrome. You can see uh, different kinds uh, of Windows environment, user agent. And next, uh, what is the platform? It is Windows platform. Uh, so from this, uh, I, am, I sent request from Windows platform only, right? So this is, that is the information, uh, that is the information. So this you can ignore as of now, I will explain you later. So this course and all, I will explain you later. So now we can see, accept language and by default something some local is printed and accept languages are us you can see accept language is us and our request clearly displayed in console this is how we can capture the console what is the advantage of this let's say your application is deployed in your uh, uh, server okay in the production or somewhere something else so if you want to capture, uh, if you want to check uh, what kind of request came into server, uh, uh, what uh, you can debug based on the, the log which is displayed in the console. So this is the request is logged in the console. So now this is how you can debug internally. You can see post request find employee. So after that is opening JPA entity manager. And then uh, you can see, uh, uh, connection is established connection is established okay and uh, also you can see all the urls which are available in currently this is the only api we have right in our controller this is the only api we have let's say if you have 10 controllers so uh, so if you have 10 controllers all the api URIs also we can see by enabling that debug logs okay so now you got to know how to capture the request from the server. Okay, so now there is another way also there. How we can do? There is a logging mechanism, logging framework that I will explain you later. So as of now, you can uh, you can learn. This is another. This is one way to capture your request details. Okay, so now uh, our controller is ready. So now as of now, I want to go next. What we need to do, let me open the PDF. So during the Spring Boot architecture, we have created controller. So now we have to create service layer. So let me create the service layer. So I will create a little bit fast, okay? So let me create service, other, Hello. let me create interface. employee service okay so here i will create uh, employee find by employee method so what it will expect it will expect only id right integer id that's it so now 
I will write uh, as of now, let it be find by employee. Okay. So now let me create another method. Employee create employee. So it will have employee information. So now create employee. So as of now, let it these two methods. Okay, so now let me go and create implementation class. So how we can create the implementation class? So right click on the service package controller. Oh, haven't created the service packages. Huh? Okay, let me let me copy this. So it is better always create packages guys you should create the package okay you should not create everything inside that okay new create other and package service package finish so inside that you can create interface employee service finish okay so i already copied so or let me write okay uh, employee find by employee and it will have integer id so input right so if you want to search the employee we need to have id as input so now if you want to save the employee so we need to have create employee method. So if you want to create the employee, we need uh, we need to have we need to pass employee information, right? So this method should have employee. Okay, as of now, let it be uh, these two methods. So now let me create implementation. Right click and others so implementation in the sense you have to create the class in previous lectures i already clearly explained you guys okay so now here employee service impl so it will extend what it will extend it will extend employee service click ok now click finish button so that's it. So uh, those, whatever methods we have written in interface, those are overrided by default, overridden by default. So now from the service we have created. After service, what we need? We need to create repository. So now let me create repository package. So inside the repository package, we need to create class. Uh, so now we are going to, uh, as discussed earlier, so what we are going to implement with the help of Spring Data JPA, with the help of repository. Earlier, we have worked with the entity manager. So now we are going to work with repository. So JPA repository. So now let me create the cl class employee repository class employee repository so we are going to implement with uh, jpa repository right there is a class super class is available you can just need to browse it here you can just type jpa repository it should have JPA repository, sorry, it should have, it is interface actually. You can see JPA repository, JPA repository is an interface. So that's the reason we have to click, you can see, if you want to extend the class, you have to click this browse button. If you want to implement the interface, you have to click add button. Since JPA repository is an interface, so you have to Im implement it. JPA repository. That's it. Now click on finish button.
click on finish button so your employee repository is ready now so why it is giving error so jpa repository is will expect two arguments to it is generic type jpa repository is having generic type what is that one one is your your uh, entity class object employee employee entity and what is the primary key i have given integer right so integer so you should give wrapper type guys okay so we have to create it as a interface because since it is a, a interface we need to create the class actually so let me create the interface and then extend the jpa repository so this is not a, a way to create it actually so let me delete it it is clearly giving the error why because we should create the interface employee repository okay so now you can see jp ah, you can extend the jp repository this is how we have to create the repository guys okay so now click on finish button so you have to create the jp uh, employee repository class and as a interface and then you have to extend the jpa repository so now here what is the generic type so we have to we are going to insert the employee right so employee information is the id first argu first uh, argument so now second one should be in your primary key if you are based on the in an employee if you give long you have to specify long if you give integer you have to specify integer you, you, sh you should give always wrapper type not primitive type so if you assume if you it should, should be wrapper type so integer that's it our repository is ready now so now we can call this repository from service layer so go to your service layer employee service impl so how we can create the service uh, repository objects so private employee repository you just need to create the instance of employee repository so now who will create the object for employee repository let me stop the server every time it is giving it is stopping right so let me stop the server after completing all the code changes we can start the server okay so who will create our employee repository object so our employee repository object will create by spring container so let me queue at the rate auto wire so the moment to declare auto wire spring container will create our employee repository that's it guys that's it very very easy now we can call all the methods so here find by employee so what we need to do employee repository dot find you can see there is set of method there is a find by id method so employee repository is having find by api method just you need to pass employee id and what it is saying so it, it will return the uh, optional of employee it will return optional of employee so that time we have to access the get method so that's it dot get method it will return optional of employee object okay that's it so now next so to create the employee also very very easy what we have to do employee repository dot there is a method save method you can see there is a method available in employee repository object save so this method will perform insert or update operation guys okay so here you need to pass employee object so before that so you have to make it your model object as a entity because we are working with jpas right we are going to perform with the jpi java persistence apis how you can perform database operations with the help of entities so you have to declare your model class as entity how we can declare at the rate entity so at the rate is not typing in my machines so what i will do let me copy that so you have to declare your pojo class as entity 
So at the rate, how we can declare at the rate entity annotation Jakarta dot persistence. Earlier it, it is having in Java Java X dot persistence package. So now they are uh, they are moved to Jakarta dot persistence dot entity. Okay. So now your class become as a entity. So the moment you declare the entity, so we should uh, define the primary key, right? So how we can define the primary key? We already discussed it, guys. So at the rate ID. So the moment you declared at the rate ID annotation, so this ID will become as a primary key of employee. So remaining, so columns, I, I don't want to specify. So let me add up now. So now who is going to create the... Uh, who is going to create the database uh, table? So as of now, as of now, let me start the server. You, you can check what will happen now. So this uh, this employee object we need to call in the controller, right? So we have created, but we have not calling that. So what you have to do here from the controller go to your architecture. So from the controller, we have to call service. From service, we have to call repository. We already called uh, repository from service rights. So now we have to call service layer from controller. So to call service layer, we need a service class object, right? So let me create private employee service interface. You have to create instance of employee service and then we have to declare it as a auto wire annotation that's it spring boot will create one singleton object one singleton shared object will created by spring container the moment you declare it as a at the rate auto wire annotation so this is a what kind of injection field level injection what kind of injection? So we have a three types of injections, constructor injection, setter injection, and field level injection. So this is called as field level injection, dependency injection, field level. So now let me call employee service dot find employee. So what we need to pass, it is expecting integer, right? So integer ID we need to pass. So how we can pass employee dot get ID. That's it. So find employee is ready now. So let me create another API. Create employee. Very, very easy, guys. You just need to practice. That's it. Create employee. So create employee also need input employee. So now we can call what is the method? In service class, we have uh, what are all the methods we have written? You can see control space, service dot control space. If you do, you can see all the available methods. So create employee. There is a create met employee method we have written in service class, create employee. So what we need to pass employee object. That's it. So two APIs are ready. But if you see, go to in our database. So we haven't created the table. So we haven't created the table. So now actually, so in Spring, I mean, uh, Spring Boot, uh, when you are using JPA in, uh, when you are working with uh, MySQL, so generally we can create a table dynamically with the help of uh, one property. I will explain you later. Let me start the server. There is no table available in database as of now. Okay. So now server is started. So you can see what it is saying. It is throwing exception. Why? Because no qualifier being employee service. No qualifier being employee service dependency annotation. So our require auto wire. It is not auto wire. No such definition being employee service why let me go to employee service so whenever exception comes you should feel very happy guys so employee service impl employee service it, uh, so here you know right so what we have to do so our class if you want to uh, become a class as a service we have to define at the rate we have to define at the rate right so at the rate 
component declare it as a component annotation so then only our spring container will create the object of employee service right so during the cre um, uh, service creation we have not added at the rate component annotation that is the reason spring container is not able to create the uh been uh, been for employee service it is clearly saying no qualifier been okay so now let me start the server again yeah now your server started successfully there is no uh errors you can see here our application is connected with which database let me check so it should connect with mysql database so as of now let me check uh, to check that one as of now just type mysql database just search for mysql in the console so i want to show you our application is connect connected with the mysql database or not you can do an uh, another way so what you can do you, ju you can uh, just uh, go to your properties file for the time being what i will do go to your uh, application.properties.xml so sorry properties file i want to disable this as of now let me remove this as of now okay Stay. So now let me, so it will have limited logs, right? So we can clearly see the logs. Let me start the server. Yeah, so now you can see, right? So here, which database it is connected. So still it is trying to connect H2 in memory database. Because of that, we are not able to find MySQL database. What is the reason? So let me check. So go to here. H2 in memory database. Let me. Check in palm.xml. We have added proper MySQL driver, guys. Let me check. Go to palm.xml. mysql runtime so it should work actually so it is not connecting so what i will do let me add another dependency this dependency is not working let me try so from where we can copy the dependency marvin repo right so marvin repo so go to marvin repo mysql dependency copy the latest version of uh, mysql connector okay so go to your palm.xml and keep add the dependency control shift f so let me start the server So let me remove H2 in memory database. What will happen? We'll see. Now you can see our application. So let me update the uh, project. So it is misguiding us actually. So what you can do, stop the server. So whenever there is a changes in uh, palm.xml, so what we can do we can update the project so right click on the project and go to move in and update the project you have to practice like this guys you do one by one so whenever there is an exception or something like that you have to find out the issue okay so now it is updated right so let me start the server again
failed to configure data source URL. So attribute is not specified and no embedded data source could be configured. So why? So let me go to application.properties. So this is on spring SPR everything data. So you can see here guys. So there is a spell mistake here. I have given there is a spell mistake instead of data source what I have given data spell mistake D A T A data source that is the reason it is always trying to connect with the HT in memory database. So data source there is a spell mistake in your URL. So now you guys get to know if is there in is there any uh, spell mistake in uh, properties which you have defined in application dot properties it will misguide you. So it is always uh, trying to connect with uh, HD in memory database because the dependency is available in form dot XML. So now I have removed the dependency from the form dot XML. Let me start the server. Yeah, perfect. Now it is giving something new. So that error is gone. So now what it is saying root access is denied at root at local host password. So incorrect credentials. So what it is saying incorrect credentials. Now let me check what is the credential I have given admin. So user user name and PSSWRD password data source. Spring, see here also SPRING. So, user, it is not taking password. Why? Because it is clearly saying access denied for the user local host. It is not able to recognize the password. Why? Because there is a spell mistake here. You can see Spring dot data source. So, now we need to correct it whenever some exception comes. So, you can see here it is clearly saying access denied for password. So, directly you can go to application dot properties. You can check what is the mistake in password. So my database password is admin only. But what I have done mistake? I have not given property properly. What is the sp spring dot s p r i n g spring? Let me save it. So now let me start the server. Now it should work hundred percent without H two in memory database. So now you can see our application is connected with MySQL database. This is how you have to debug guys. Whenever some exception comes, most of the people's what they will do, they will not read the error. Without reading the error, uh, they are, will try to keep on check the code, start the server. Check the code, start the server. It will not help actually. So whenever there is some exception, we should read the error. So my mistake actually earlier, even I have also done small uh, small mistake. So what I have done, there is a spell mistake in spring dot data source dot password key. So I have given wrong key for to enable the password. So that is the reason it is not given in the password. So now it is able to connect with MySQL database. You got it right successfully. So now let me so go to the server. So we haven't created the table. Let's see whether a table is created or not. So you there is no table here. If you remember in previous class, if you remember when we are working with H2 in memory database, Hibernate is created table by default, right? So entity JPI is created table for us when we are working with uh, H2 in memory database. Now in uh, MySQL, Hibernate is not creating the table by default because whenever you are working with the relational database oracle or mysql database or mongodb any database spring boot by de uh, disable that future uh, what is that future it will not create the table by default so now we have to enable it whenever working with mysql and oracle or mongodb any database so Hibernate is not going to create the database table by default. So if you want to create Hibernate as, uh, if you want uh, JPA to create the table, we have to enable the property. What is that property? Let me write spring dot S P R I N G spring dot JPA dot Hibernate dot Hibernate dot DDL. DDL hyphen 
auto equal create or update let me create so spring dot jpa dot hibernate dot ddl hyphen auto if you enable this property in application dot properties file you can go and check in your database now refresh the repo you can see now employee table is created by default you got the point right so whenever you are working with spring data jpa uh, with mysql or oracle or mongodb so spring boot by default it will not enable a table creation by auto table creation it will not enable auto table creation future so to if you want to create a table by the jdb is a jpa so we have to enable this property in application dot properties file spring dot jpa dot hibernate dot ddl iphon auto create so now this table is created by jpa so we, we we can continue tomorrow guys so it's already 5 12 so 6 uh, i think uh, 6 40 right so we'll connect tomorrow okay so you guys you guys you have to make sure you guys are practicing every day if you don't practice uh you cannot learn anything so uh, here we have discussed a lot of concept in depth also okay you have to make it note and you have to practice every day so we can connect tomorrow guys thank you